Hello people from the internet. You probably noticed that Bitwake has released a beta version of 4.3. A new toy was added for us, Convolution. And this means for us a new expansion of our sound design horizon. Some might say, Chris, we already have a reverb plugin. Why should we be happy about a Convolution reverb? And I say, unconvolute your mind. <laughs> Convolution can do so much more. Convolution can be used to make signals sound as if they were sounding somewhere else or through something. If you record a room impulse response, which is the reverberation of a short, loud sound, you can use our new toy to make your synthesizers sound as if you had them in that room with you. But even cooler things can be done. For example, you can record impulse responses from your favorite effect chain with certain limitations, keyword non-linearities or time variance. Or record impulse responses from your own mouth and convolute with them. But more about that later. Or you can program your own rooms. Huh? What? Exactly. I programmed myself a little algorithm in the freely available MATLAB clone Octave that generates room impulse responses for me according to desired factors. You may have seen a view like this in your favorite reverb plugins. The bars in this view represent reflections. The further to the right they are, the later the reflection occurs, and the lower the bar, the quieter the reflection. And that's exactly what I want to create with my program. But let's start at the beginning. Let's create the simplest convolution ever so we can better understand convolution with such room impulse responses. The simplest form of convolution is this, the number one. If we create an audio file which contains only one sample and this sample has the maximum amplitude, that is full scale, then after the convolution we get the input signal back as the result. We do not change anything in the signal. We create an exact copy of the input signal because we multiply our samples by one. This is the simplest form. If we place another one in the generated audio file with the one in a little later, we get two copies, one of them delayed. Fun fact, what we prove by accident is that the number one contains all frequencies. The output signal sounds completely the same, not high pass filtered or anything. A filtering input response looks and sounds like this. Or this. Anything other than just a single number. And reverberation from rooms is very simplistically hardly anything else. It is the convolution of the originally generated sound with the response of the room. So multiple copies of the original sound in filtered form. Walls and objects do not reflect perfect copies, but change the signal in some way. And the initial reflections do not cease to exist when they come from the source, by the wall, to our ears, but reflect again and again. At some point this becomes diffuse reverberation. But in my programming world, I create, for the sake of simplicity, rooms which always throw back perfect copies. How did I approach the matter now? I can't simply place numbers by hand. I have to automate this in some way. Otherwise I would be sitting here forever. I thought I use a noise of the length of the desired reverberation in order to have a random factor for again and again different results. This noise consists of numbers. And these numbers are all different sizes. Here, for example, you can see the distribution of how often certain numbers occur in this noise. And then I define a threshold, a minimum value, so to speak, which the numbers in this noise must exceed in order to be allowed into my room input response. With this threshold, I can then determine the frequency of occurrence of reflections. So then an array of numbers is created that contains mostly zeros 
Unless we exceed the threshold, then a correspondingly large number is put there at that time. However, since reverberations get quieter over time, we need to make the numbers smaller and smaller over the length of the array. For this, I use an exponential function, which can be adjusted in the speed of the decay. I then do the whole thing twice, so we have different responses for the left and the right to have a nice stereo width. The file is then copied to a folder, which I already have entered in Bitwig, so that we can find the files directly in the browser as well as in the convolution selection. And we are ready to go. We load the convolution plugin into the channel, select our created room inputs response and listen to it. Hmm, not as crappy as I thought. A bit harsh though, but fortunately we can counteract that with the shelving filter. We can change the room size by pitching our room input response up or down. So we make it shorter or longer. And by delaying the reverb, it feels even more natural, more spatial. Personally, I also like to do one of the new effects on the reverb signal. I really liked the chorus plus here. It makes it sound even a little more rounder, more homogeneous. If we compare both versions here with and without chorus, it's particularly noticeable what I mean. Now we can create an infinite number of rooms. I like. Okay. And what did I mean earlier about recording input responses from your own mouth? I mean, everyone has a party bar converted to a recording booth in their basement, right? You can record things super dry in there. For example, input responses from your own mouth. You position your vocal tract as if you're going to say or sing a vowel, and then you hold your breath so that the lung air volume is separated. Then you can flick against your larynx to stimulate the air to vibrate. You record that and bobs your uncle. By the way, you've already heard what this sounds like in the examples. I recorded the German accented vowels A, E, I, O, U and placed them in an effects selector set to round robin so it cycles through the convolution with each note. Sounds cool, doesn't it? So get creative. Think of things that you can convolute with and you really don't need a recording booth. Take your smartphone, hold it close to your sound source. Nowadays, the microphones in smartphones are so good that that's perfectly adequate. Then cut the audio signal in front and behind the input and you're ready to go. I hope I could inspire you with this video and motivate you to think in different ways. As payment, I accept a like and a subscription or listen to my music on the relevant streaming platforms. Until next time, bye!